to say good morning and welcome to everyone on a beautiful Monday afternoon and uh, welcome you all to a demo for our ISM ShipLink product. The ISM ShipLink product is a very simplistic bridge product that transfers information from the MASS 9200 system over to the UPS and FedEx shipping software. For purposes of demonstration today, I'm going to be utilizing uh, the UPS software only. And again, very simple bridge product that seamlessly tra transfers data back and forth. So to get started, once you install ISM ShipLink into your MASS system, you'll see that you get a new menu option under sales order, the ISM Shipping Link Setup. If you go through this, you see under the options, we have the ability to populate the database, which transfers the information out of mass and makes it available for the shipping software from either the sales order entry, sales order invoice data entry, or sales order shipping data entry. For purposes of demonstration today, we're going to be utilizing the sales order entry screens. Some other available options we have are we have the availability to set the signature required in WorldShip. This was one of our original modifications that we installed. I do like to warn everyone that since that time, WorldShip, EPS, has made this an upcharge on their shipping system whenever you set the signature required. So you do want to be very careful, as this will set the signature required on every order going out of WorldShip. New to our 4.4 and 4.5 installs is the ability to auto-capture freight on the invoice creation, which I'll be showing you as we go through um, the demo. We've made it an option, and I'll explain more on that as we get to it. We also have the ability to auto-populate the standard tracking file within the MAS 9200 system, rather than our own ISM tracking file that we also have available. Along with this, we have the ability to set our desired captured me method by either package charge or shipment total. The difference between these two is if you're going to be uh, adding any handling fees. If you set up your UPS system to automatically add a 5% upcharge for handling or a $2 upcharge uh, by handling, that would be included in the shipment total rather than just the package charge. Along with this, if we're upgrading from older versions, we do have some conversion tools, which if you're purchasing new, is not going to be applicable to your installation. We also have the ability to populate the QVN and the alert notifications from FedEx and UPS. We have the ability to send up to two notifications, and the fields that are available to be populated from are the email from within the customer master file, the email from the primary contact code, or the email from the sales order header field. Please note that these fields must be populated in mass or the data will not flow over. For purposes of today's demo, we're just going to select the sales order field. A tool that we've added is to populate the shipping link table. Uh, basically, what this is utilized for is if you're importing uh, orders from EDI or through a visual integrator job or something to that effect, how our product standardly works, as you'll see as I go through the demo, is once I enter an order and click Accept, it triggers our program to populate a database with that information, making it available to UPS and FedEx. Uh, if you're importing orders, obviously we don't want to have to have you walk through all of them uh, in order to populate that database. So you can run this quick utility, which will allow that database to be populated. I also want to note that in our upcoming 4.5 release, we have added some logic to make that populate automatically, regardless of whether it's an imported order or a manually entered order. Uh, remove prior versions of shipping link, again, is an upgrade tool. If purchasing new would not be applicable to you. Uh, and if we're using the auto capture freight, and you're set to utilizing invoice data entry as your option, you will need to run this uh, exterior utility to get the freight to populate on that because the invoice has already been entered once it's populated. UPS Online Tools and Registration is a one-time setup with your specific information from UPS that will allow you to go out to the UPS website and communicate, it, communicate with it for tracking uh, purposes as well as some address verification, which is what I'm going to be showing you. So just to get in with the demo, I'm going to go to sales order entry. I'm going to create a new order as normal. We're going to uh, our customer here, Papa Does Puppies, and we're just going to give it a new PO number for our purchase order number. For shipping, I'm going to change it to UPS Red. 
So the UPS next there. You can see that uh, we're going to put in Papa as a confirm. His email is populated. I'm going to go to the Lunch tab. And it doesn't matter what I populate, so I'm just going to put a comment code for purposes, purposes of this specific order. And I'm just going to go ahead and accept. Once I get into the UPS, I can turn my key import. And I type in my order number of 261. I see it automatically populates with my company name, the confirmation name, their address. I've got it populated with their account number, which is an, it's populating to receiver, which is something I'm going to show you. It's an option that can be set up in the software. You can see that it automatically pulled the next day error. If you go to options, you can see that the quantum communication is clicked on, and it's a recipient. You can see that his email is automatically populated in there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ship this package. I'm going to say that it's one pound. You can see that it's one pound with 5181. I'm going to go ahead and process that. This would normally print out your label uh, on your thermal printer. However, uh, I live in a make-believe world, and I don't believe in wasting paper, so I'm going to send this through a digital label printer. As soon as it's processed here, we can go right back into mass.order number, click on my send button, and you can see we have available the order ID, the tracking number associated with the package, as well as the freight amount, the weight, and the ship date. From this window, I have a couple different options. I can go ahead and track. This is going to add out to our website. And again, I am living in a make-believe world, and the brown truck did not pull up outside my door and turn this package into its system, so we are not getting But had we, it would enter the tracking number, automatically enter the carrier and the ship date, and below it, it would show you current status information, such as on truck at 5.30 p.m., arrived at warehouse at 7, on plane at midnight, et cetera, et cetera. We also have the ability from this window to highlight and tap the line. And if we go to the total tab, you can see that it automatically populates the weight and the freight amount. We have made this optional because many people don't want to populate with the actual freight amount. They may have systems set up that, you know, one to five packages is $10 shipping, five to 10 is $15 shipping, et cetera. Uh, so this is an option to capture, and I will be showing you the auto capture freight. I'm going to go ahead and make up that and enter my next order, number 268. I'm going to use the same client, Papa Does Possibility. I'm going to leave it at ground time, and I'm going to say shipper for my PO number, because what I want to show you here on the address tab is a few things. First of all, we've added a few UDFs for third party. So if we have the client's UPS account number, we can automatically build that, which you saw in the first example. For the second example, I'm going to unclick this button stating that we do not want to bill their UPS account number. For lines, I'm also going to come over here. I'm going to put in an item. I'm going to say that we have two of those. And um, also here I wanted to show you our shipping address. I'm going to change this to an address that I know is invalid. When I come here and I click on this LA shipping address, it takes us out to the UPS website where we can click verify address. It goes out, it waits for the response from the UPS website, and as you will see, it brings all the valid information from that street address in that city and that state, letting me know that 800 Woodland Avenue is not a valid address. I can then come in here and quit populate this correctly with 300, and you'll see that if we validate that address again, it will come up and show me that 300 Woodland Avenue is a valid address. So this can save time on invalid addresses, returned packages, etc. I'm going to go right ahead. I'm going to accept this order again. And in UP, if I come in and I key my 268, see that this time it did pick it up as ground. You can see this time it did bill transportation to the shipper, not the receiver. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say that this is a three-pound package. Go ahead and process that. Give me the name. And again, we can go right into 268. As you can see, 
all of our information at all. To show you a another option for DOD, we'll pick her. Lynn, and we're going to say COD. I've got their terms code set up as COD. Uh, we don't have an email in here, so I'm just going to say Winnie at anyemail.com. I'm going to come. I'm going to say that, what shall we ship today? We'll ship uh, two printer vans for a total of 358. I'm going to go ahead and next order 269. Again, I come here and enter order 269. You can see it's brought in all the pertinent information, as well as if I come here, we have the quantum view notify clicked on automatically as previously. But you'll also notice that COD is clicked on, and it's automatically populated the COD amount from the order. We can again go ahead and process the shipment. Say it was two pounds, and it will show as normal. Only. Uh, Another thing that I want to show you here is if we don't go into that order 269, 269, and we don't go in and capture the information of this, we can also now go in this data entry. Go ahead, give it an invoice. Type in our sales order of 269. Because I had checked on to auto populate the standard tracking file, we now see the tracking number available here under the standard tracking for math. And again, this will take us out ship website and give us standard information. And again, this is a standard function of math at this time. It has nothing to do with our product, except automatically populated it for you. You can also see um, that if I go to the lines, I'm going to ship the complete order. And when I go to totals, it has automatically populated with the weight and freight amount. I did not have to come in here, click the SM shipping link, and manually capture it. So again, we've made that an option for people who always utilize the actual freight amount from their shipping software. It will automatically populate, allowing you the ability to skip a few clicks of the mouse and ease your order entry and invoice entry uh, time. Or again, it can be optional dependent on your needs. We can go ahead and accept this. I'm going to go ahead and update our order. I'm going to say no to the data transaction re uh, register because it doesn't really matter. But what I want to show you is that this information will stay all the way through invoice history in court. So we should have uh, we can select that invoice. Let's say your customer does on and say, I have my invoice, but I've not received my package yet. I have invoice number 100097. Can you give me some information on that? You can simply go into Invoice History Inquiry, pull up the invoice, click the send shipping, highlight the line, track, to be able to get current status of your client on the phone right then and there. You also have the option of adding the tracking information to your invoice uh, form so that they can track on their own. And again, if you are utilizing the QVN notification, you have the ability, uh, they will be receiving an, uh, an email from UPS as soon as that package ships and is scanned into their system with the ability from them to track through that email. So that would also be saving your uh, customer service team some time, allowing the customer to follow up on it on its own. Uh, the only other option we have is if we go under main, we also have an ISM UPS tracking here. 
The difference between this and going windway is you do need to manually enter the tracking number. Once you do, this will go out directly to the UPS website rather than the iShip website and give you the current status. Uh, we do utilize the iShip website, as does Sage Software, because of the ability for iShip to track multiple carriers, such as both FedEx and UPS, rather than just UPS, which would only track the UPS packages under this screen. We did add this uh, according to our agreement with UPS. 